We're going to learn a little bit about pathophysiology of how insulin is supposed to work in the body and how it breaks in diabetes. And then we'll talk about how you manage patients in the outpatient setting. We'll talk a little bit about the inpatient setting and also go over the different legitimate regimens for insulin use. We'll start off first a little bit the pathophysiology. In your body, you always have a little bit of insulin. This is the basal coverage. And then as you eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, your glucose levels will rise. And the idea is that you want to be controlled. As your glucose level rises, you're going to have postprandial insulin spikes. And that causes the glucose to be controlled. If those prandial spikes weren't there, the glucose would just rise and go up and stay up. What happens in diabetes is insulin insensitivity. The basal insulin that's there isn't enough to control the blood sugar, so it has to go up higher. And every time you eat, there needs to be more insulin secreted. But since there's always insulin around, the body's like, okay, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm used to seeing you. So it needs more and more insulin. And eventually the pancreas burns out. Or in the case of type 1, the pancreas just dies. There's no insulin at all. So ideally, if we were to replace insulin, we would have the same physiology occur. The best insulin strategy is basal bolus. That is a long-acting insulin given some time during the day, usually done at night, and then bolus, a rapid-acting insulin with meals, ACHS. That's the best strategy, but it's also hard. So let's talk a bit, a little bit about now the different insulin types before we start talking a lot about different regimens, realizing that basal bolus is what we want to do. It is far easier for me to use the trade names in this discussion rather than the generics. And I know that's frustrating because on the test you're going to see generic names, but if you can master the idea behind insulin using the trade names, it's pretty easy to translate into generics. All right, <clears throat> there are long-acting insulins. They both begin with L. They are Lantus and Levomir. Long acting. These are your basal coverage. The rapid acting insulins have a manufacturer, then their suffix. Watch what I mean. There is Novo and Huma log. The log insulins are going to be rapid acting. These are your bolus insulins. Now to make it very confusing, they've got the similar manufacturer names, but then they've added on a different suffix. Novo and Huma Lin. These are generally going to be a mix, and you'll see 70 30 or 50 50. It's a mix of long acting and short acting insulin. It's actually a mix of NPH and regular insulin. NPH is the equivalent of long-acting, but because of the way it works, it has to be given twice a day. And regular insulin is rapid, but its half-life is really long and not physiologic. So how do you pick these? NPH and regular are for cost. They're really cheap. As we'll discuss, Novolin and Humulin mixtures are really easy to use, though they're not that good. And the best regimen you can pick is a basal bolus insulin using both long-acting and rapid-acting. The faster the action of the insulin, the Novolog Humalog, the better it is. 
you can simulate basal bolus with NPH and regular, but where you should really go is the long-acting once a day with the rapid-acting with meals. This will all kind of come together, I promise. All right, so if you're in the outpatient setting, you have already at step three, which was add an insulin. We're going to do this the right way. Right? So what you're going to do is start a long-acting at 0 0.1 units per kg. Start a long-acting once daily injection. And you have the patient check their sugar before breakfast. I'll explain why in a minute. And you titrate that long-acting insulin based on the fasting glucose in the morning. So you continue to increase the basal until that morning sugar is normal. If you're still not an A1C goal, you add another insulin. Remember, you titrate this long acting starting at 0.1 units per kg, keep going up until that morning sugar is at goal or until you reach about 50 units. If the A1C is still not at goal, it means that you have to start an insulin at another meal time. So you pick the biggest meal time and you start a wrapping. And this process continues until their basal bolus. What does basal bolus look like? All right. Remember, we're trying to simulate what the body actually does. This is your day, meal, lunch, dinner, bedtime. At bedtime, you do your long acting. With meals, you do your bolus. What you are going to instruct your patient to do is check a sugar, give an insulin, eat a meal. If they shoot, they eat. If they do not shoot, they do not eat. If they do not eat, they should not shoot. Giving insulin and not eating anything is going to cause problems of hypoglycemia. And here's the thing, this is going to repeat for each mealtime. Of course, they're not eating here at bedtime, they're just going to sleep. But you still need to check a blood glucose. Because the glucose you have right now at the current mealtime is dependent on what you ate at the last meal and how much insulin you gave at the last meal. The glucose right now is dependent on the thing you just did. This is very important to analyzing questions that give you a list of blood glucose and say, what insulin should you change? So at dinner, whatever the glucose is right now is dependent on what you ate for lunch and whatever insulin you gave at lunch. Say it again, at bedtime, whatever your glucose is now is dependent on what you ate for dinner and how much insulin you gave at dinner. It goes back. And so the same is true of the long acting, which is why we use the AM check to titrate the long acting. The morning glucose is dependent on how much insulin you gave last night. This is very important, so I'm gonna keep saying it. If you're looking at a logbook and the glucose at lunch is high, you want to adjust the insulin at breakfast. Basal bolus is the best way to do it because you're simulating what actually happens in the body. But notice it requires four glucose checks, four insulin injections and you're using two different types of insulins. It's pretty complicated, so not everyone will be able to do that. This is the right way to do things, basal bolus. There are other options, what I call idiot insulin. That is, you just give your mixture 
twice a day. Remember, it's a combination of long-acting and rapid-acting insulin. So you kind of have this basal coverage, you kind of have this prandial coverage, not really, but sort of. BID mixed is still good, and it's ideal for patients who can't handle the four times a day or are unwilling to check their sugar as frequently. The risks of hypoglycemia here are less, but also the glucose control is worse. As we just learned, though, we can, you can still work this by evaluating the blood glucose prior to the insulin injection, knowing that if you need to titrate, you can by looking back at what you just ate and the insulin you just gave. The problem with 70-30 is that it looks something like this. With the insulin coverage, not at all like what we saw with basal bolus. Doable not as good as basal bolus. Then there's the wrong way to do things. And this is what you'll see done in the hospital. This is the sliding scale insulin. This is the wrong way. This is mixed. This is the easy way, but not the right way. Basal bolus is the right way. The problem with sliding scale insulin is that you check a sugar and you give insulin based on the sugar right now. And as we just learned, the sugar right now is based on the insulin you just gave. So what happens is the person will have a blood sugar of 500 and they'll get 15 units of insulin. And then they'll come back and now their sugar is 25. Whoops, probably shouldn't have given that much. So they get D50. And then they come back and their sugar's 400. So they get another sliding scale, they get 10. And now their sugar's 200. These swings that occur happen because you are being reactive rather than proactive. Sliding scale is the absolute worst thing to do. Except in the hospital, what you want to do is basal bolus plus. The right way is to do basal bolus plus supplemental sliding scale insulin. The supplemental sliding scale will be QAC, QHS, while they're eating, and then Q four hours while NPO. The idea being, you are going to do basal bolus, and if their sugar happens to be a little high, you'll supplement a little bit. In the hospital, basal bolus goes like this. You will choose your total daily insulin based on either 0.5 units per kg or 0.3 units per kg. 0.3 units is if their creatinine is greater than 1.5, their age is greater than 65, or their presentation of glucose is less than 180. Whichever one you pick doesn't matter. The total daily insulin is going to be divided up 50% into basal, 50% into bolus, and bolus is divided into three meals. You can also determine a mixed insulin regimen using a similar strategy, where the total daily insulin for the mixed will be two-thirds AM, one-third PM. And this is a good way to ballpark how much insulin someone will require in the hospital. All right, one last advanced point of hospital management. You have the basal bolus. You've chosen their starting regimen. You've put them on sliding scale in addition. As the person eats and their blood sugar is checked, if they need more, they'll be given that sliding scale. At the end of the day, you tally up how much sliding scale they needed and then you add it to their regimen in the same ratio with 50% basal, 50% bolus, separated one third of each bolus. And in that way, you increase the scheduled insulin until their glucose goes under control. Last, last caveat is if you've decided that their regimen, their total daily insulin, is a value based on their weight that is less than the insulin they're already on, just continue their insulin regimen. And every time you bring someone into the hospital, you stop all their orals, 
and start insulin basal bolus. Okay, so in this lecture, we talked about a little bit about pathophysiology, trying to identify the insulins and how you'd use them, recognizing how you start insulin in the clinic, which is 0.1 units per kg long-acting titrate based on the morning glucose, and then add rapid acting at meals, one meal at a time until the patient gets to goal. The right way to do things is eventually getting them to a full basal bolus strategy with a long acting at night, rapid acting with meals. It's okay to use the mixed insulin strategy either twice a day or three times a day with meals, knowing that you're not gonna get as good glucose control, but it's better than nothing. The absolute wrong way to do things is simply do sliding scale, whether that's in the hospital or at home, don't do it. Where it is okay to do sliding scale is in addition to one of these regimens, the time it is useful is in addition to one of these regimens, especially basal bolus, because it allows you to identify how much extra insulin they'll need, and you can use that to add to their current regimen. That's insulin management.